Great question. Let's dig in. I'm, I'm Paul Mays. I'm a Christian. Got a great question here. So you don't belong to a church that is in a denomination. What's the name of the church you attend? Yes, absolutely. Let's dig in. That's a great, honest question. I'm privileged to give you the, the Bible answers to this. All right. So you don't belong to a church that is in a denomination. Correct. What is the name of the church that you attend? Well, there's a designation of ownership that's in the Bible, and I'll get to it. But first, we're going to start with the promise that the Savior gave us. It's a two-part promise, two promises that Jesus gave us in Matthew 16, 18. I will build my church, singular, possessive. The gates of hell shall not prevail against it, singular, permanent. That means that the church that Jesus promised to build is still here. If we start with that understanding, that faith, belief that God that Jesus built his church and that it's still here because Jesus said so. Now, if you start with this understanding, then you can move to the next point, which is, wonder what denomination that was. Mm -mm. There were no denominations when Jesus said that. So that means the one church that Jesus promised to build, which is literally, by definition, pre-denominational, before all religious division, is still here. She's still here. And I want to be part of that church. If we move next to the Lord's Prayer for Unity... Recorded for us in John 17, 20 through 23, we learn a very valuable truth here, and that is that religious division hurts Jesus. The reason it hurts Jesus is revealed in the prayer itself. Jesus prayed that we would all be one. Over and over and again, he said one. Neither pray I for these alone, but also for me, who those who will believe in me through their word, that they may be one, Father, as you and I are one. And he says one over and over and over in this prayer. Then he tells us the result of people being united, people being one, people being unified. The result of that would be that the world will know that God loves us and that God sent Jesus. That's what he said. So religious division hurts Jesus because the opposite is true. Because denominations exist, because religious division exists, people don't believe. They, well, you got your you got your way, and he says this, and he says that. I, I don't even believe in God. That's the, the dirty, ugly result of religious division, the dirty, ugly result of denominationalism. So denominations do not exist by the authority of Jesus Christ. They're actually against his will. This is proven by John 17, 20 through 23, the Lord's Prayer for Unity. We can confirm this further with 1 Corinthians 1, 10 through 13. Now I beseech you, brethren, in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, that you all speak the same thing, that there be no divisions among you, but that you all be perfectly joined together in the same mind and the same judgment. You drop down to verse 10. If you drop down to verse 13, you'll see some of you are saying, I'm of Paul, I'm of Apollos, I'm of Silas or Cephas or Silas. I always get those two mixed up. And I'm of Christ. Is Christ divided? So it's a rhetorical question. Were you baptized in the name of Paul? It's a rhetorical question. Christ isn't divided. You can't divide the body. Christ is the head, the body. The church is the body. You can't divide the church. You can't. It kills it. If you divide the body, it kills the body. You can't divide it. Now, people think that we, we understand now, this confirms that religious division is against Christ. We understand that religious division is against Christ, and we can be the one pre-denominational church that, that belongs to Christ. The million-dollar question is, how can we be that church rather than being a denomination? How can we be that church? We've got to be perfectly joined together, the same mind and the same judgment. How does that work? 2 John 1, 9, He that abides not in the doctrine of Christ has not God. He that abides in the doctrine of Christ has both the Father and the Son. Where is the doctrine of Christ sourced from? Man-made manuals? Rule books? God books? Hand books? Catechisms? Mm -mm, mm -mm. The completely sufficient Bible. All Scripture is God-breathed, Profitable for doctrine, reproof, correction, and righteousness that the man of God may be perfectly equipped, thoroughly furnished. The Bible is it. There's no authority for, for denominations to exist. In fact, there's no such thing as a Christian denomination. How do we know? Christian means following Christ. It's not following Christ to be divided. It's just not. Jesus said in John 8, 31 and 32, If... You abide in my word. You are my disciples indeed. And you shall know the truth, and the truth shall make you free. So the Bible completely equips us. It is knowable truth, and we are only his disciples. We are only Christians if we abide in his word. If we abide in the doctrine of Christ, 2 John 1, 9. If we abide in the words of Jesus, John 8, 31. It's not abiding in the words of Jesus to be divided. It is against his will. 
We can be the one church of the Bible by abiding in the doctrine of Christ. There's no such thing as a Christian denomination because being denominated, divided, is against Christ. That 1 Corinthians 1.10, it can be rephrased easily to apply to everyone today and 13. Now, I'm urging y'all, I'm begging with you Christians, by, because Jesus said so in the name of Jesus Christ, that y'all be, speak the same thing. That there be no denominations, no divisions among you, no denominations, but that you all be perfectly joined together in the same mind and the same judgment. If we're getting our individual doctrines from the writings of Calvin or Luther or anybody, when God said the Bible is completely sufficient, we can't speak the same thing. We can't speak the same thing if we're turning to the writings of men, fallible men that have no authority. The Bible is knowable truth. John 8, 32 and John 17, 17. Sanctify them in the truth. Your word is truth. God already gave us before any of these man-made manuals came about. God already gave us all things that pertain to life and godliness. 2 Peter 1, 3. It's the Bible. It completely equips us. The faith has already been delivered once for all. Jude 1, 3. I encourage you to look these scriptures up. Now, I'm, I'm going to get to the answer now. What, what church? What's the name of the church? She doesn't have a name. She has a designation of ownership. She does, and it's recorded for us in the Bible. Romans 16, 16. The churches of Christ salute you. That's not a name. It, it means the church that belongs to Christ. It means the one that he promised to build. The one he promised would always exist in Matthew 16, 18. It's that one. I want to be part of that church, and I want you to be part of that church. There's only way, one way to be part of that church. There's no such thing as a Christian denomination, because being divided is against Christ. There's no such thing as a hyphenated Christian. You can't become, if you pick up that completely sufficient Bible, you can't become anything other than a Christian. You can't become a, a Protestant or a Catholic. You can't become any of the 40 plus thousand flavors of Protestant. You cannot become a Baptist, a, a Pentecostal, a Methodist, a Wesleyan, anything, anything like that. You can't become anything other than a Christian by picking up that completely sufficient Bible. The Bible makes Christians. The disciples were called Christians first at Antioch, Acts 11, 26. There is no other name given among men whereby we must be saved, Acts 4, 12. So I'm a Christian. I'm part of the church that belongs to Christ, the church of Christ. Jesus added me to that church. That's the only way to be part of the church that Jesus built. Now, you can join a denomination. You can be voted into a denomination. But you can't join the Lord's church. And you can't be voted in. Man has no authority to do that. Only Jesus will put you in his church. The Lord added to the church daily those who are being saved. That's for during the first gospel sermon. First gospel sermon. Anyone who calls on the name of the Lord will be saved. Acts 2.21. You people killed Jesus. Acts 2.36. What do we do about that? Acts 2.37. This reveals they didn't know how to call upon the name of the Lord. So he told them, Repent and be baptized, every one of you, in the name of Jesus Christ, for the remission of sins. You shall receive the gift of the Holy Spirit, Acts 2.38. This offer is good for you and all who are afar off, Acts 2.39. So save yourselves, Acts 2.40. The ones that gladly received his word did so by being baptized, Acts 2.41. And they were added, 3,000 of them that day. Jesus was the one who did the adding, and he's still adding you people today. He added me, and he can add you. How? If you do what they did that day, gladly receive his word by repenting and being baptized. That's the only way that the way, John 14, 6, Jesus Christ offers. That's the only way to be in the church that belongs to Christ, which is literally pre-denominational. Now, at this point, you people are just a denomination too. We get that. We, we hear that. all People tell us all the time, you can't be the church without being a denomination. The reason people think that is because that's all they've ever known. That's all they've ever seen. But it was 300 or maybe 600 years before the first denomination reared its ugly head and decided to reject the authority of Christ. A few hundred years later, about at the 1800s, 1600s, 1800s, that's when the Protestants started cropping up. None of that exists by the authority of Jesus Christ, and we can be the one pre-denominational church that belongs to Christ. It is through abiding in the doctrine of Christ that we are the Church of Christ, like the Church of Christ. The church of Christ is the Church of Christ. I love everybody in a let's go to heaven together kind of way. That's why I do what I do. I want to go to heaven, and I want you to go to heaven. Do what those penitent believers did. 3,000 of them did. Everybody in the book of Acts heard the good news about Jesus, believed he is the sinless son of God, confessed that deity before others, that belief in that deity before others, repented of sins, and were immersed in water for the remission of sins, Acts 2.38, for the washing of sins, Acts 22.16. Jesus himself 
put them in his church. He'll do that for you too. And Paul